Okay, folks, welcome back. This is the week ending April 26, 2019, weekly review for the ICT mentorship. Obviously, the focus is going to be economic calendar as usual, our general commentary, US dollar index, euro dollar, pound dollar, and a review on dollar cat. Okay, looking ahead at our economic calendar for the week to come. On Monday, we have core PCE, price index, and personal spending for dollar. Nothing really to speak of for euro dollar and cable for London Open on Monday. Tuesday, we have Spanish Flash GDP and preliminary CPI for euro. And GDP for Canadian dollar, which is high impact, 8.30 a.m. New York Open. Employment cost index for the dollar index, and then Chicago PMI for 9.45 dollar index, and then the consumer confidence for dollar at 10 a.m. On Wednesday, we have manufacturing PMI for cable for London Open and net lending to individuals. 8.15, we have non-farm employment change. 10 a.m., we have ISM manufacturing PMI, FOMC statement, Fed funds rate and FOMC press conference. Big, big, big red event for uh, Wednesday. So between the um, PMI and FOMC, Wednesday is pretty much a wash. Uh, I would be only scalping in the London Open, and that's it. That would be the very last thing for that day. The Thursday, we have Bank of England. Inflation report, official bank rate votes, and monetary policy summary, and the bank rate release at 7 a.m., which is New York Open. Then we have asset purchase and <laughs> Bank of England, Carney speaking, 7.30 a.m. So talk about a lot of things happening for cable. Thursday is absolutely hands-off. And Friday, we have GBP for London Open, service PMI. And flash estimate, 5 a.m. for euro, and core CPI flash estimate. 8:30 a.m. news embargo lifts for New York session. Average hourly earnings, non-farm payroll, and unemployment rate, which is obviously the day we don't trade at all. It's a carnival ride. And in 10 a.m. we have non-manufacturing PMI. So in summary, this is where you want to be focusing for next week. And if you can't find anything during this period, don't do anything next week at all. So I'll be very, very light in my expectations and waiting to see what happens as a result of all the heavy hitters that's coming off of Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays economic news drivers. Moving into dollar index. This is our daily chart. We have a old daily high here. I'm noting the, the body, the close. Okay, so... That's what's being referenced here. And then we have a fair value gap right here. So a BISI, buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, one single candle passing from the previous candle's high, the next candle's low. So the market will want to rebalance between there. We saw today, for this Friday, uh, the market did come back down into that and retest that level. So we're going to refine that as we drop down into it. But going forward, I want to see it maintain its ability to stay above this candle's close. Okay, so if we trade back below that, that's suspect and we might have some difficulties near term for the dollar rally. Uh, until we trade below on a closing basis on the daily chart, uh, below this candle's close, and again, this will be more uh, specific when we drop down lower time frames. As long as we're not closing below that on a daily basis, I'm bullish on dollar with the expectation that we will want to fill in that weekly SIBI, sell side and balance, buy side inefficiency. And again, refer to your old notes and previous market reviews. Moving into the dollar index on an hourly basis, you can see we have a BISI here, buy side and balance, sell side inefficiency. Midpoint of that is consequent encroachment. Price trades down to that today. And we're going to refine that even more when we go down to a 15-minute time frame. But for now, this is enough. 
Uh, we have a London open order block being traded right here at the old December 14, 2018 daily high. So that's that old high I was referencing on the daily chart. And again, this is that closing basis. So as long as we close above this level here, I'm bullish looking for continuation on the dollar. Now, if we close below this level on a daily basis, then I will be really expecting it to trade aggressively away from that higher or the longer it spends below that, the more likely we're going to be making an attempt to go down into this area here. And I don't see that right now, but that's what would be the catalyst. If we close below the old December 14, 2018 daily high, that's the closing price that's being shown here. Okay, Not the daily high itself for that day. But at that old high, notice we have a line open order block right here on a daily basis. So that's bullish for dollar. That would be bearish for foreign currency. A weekly high comes in at 98.04, which is slightly higher than the previous day's high on Thursday. So we have a slightly higher high being formed Thursday to Friday for dollar index. We'll check that as we go through the euro and five, I'm sorry, fiber and cable. Moving into a 15 minute time frame for the dollar index, you can see we have that same BISI here. Okay, and now this is the lesson for this week. When we refine the BISI from, or any imbalance really, from a higher time frame down to the lower time frame, this is the mechanics behind it, the procedure that I go through. So this is the old levels or upper and lower thresholds that create the 60 minute BISI. Now we have one single candle that passes inside of the range of the high and the low of the 60 minute BISI. The 15 minute BISI is this range here. This candle is low, this one here, and this candle's high. Okay, right before we create this one single 15 minute candle. So that's the range that we start with. So that becomes the high of the 15 minute BISI and the low of the 15 minute BISI. Consequent encroachment, and you can check this on your own data feed. You'll see that it's exactly this. It's not lipstick, it's not form fitted. It's exactly IPTA. Consequent encroachment is the midpoint of the imbalance. There you go. Perfect IPTA precision. Can't ask for anything better than that. It's to the pip. In here, we have the old daily high on a closing basis. So again, we're focusing on the volume. The maximum volume in a range or candle is going to be identified inside of the body of that candle. The wicks are not so much. That's usually a um, offset distribution or a very thin portion of stop running. So on December 14, 2018, that high, notice that same level, if we project it out in time, it creates a down close candle, which is a bullish order block. We trade down into it here during London on the 25th. And it's also the exact midpoint or consequent encroachment of the fair value gap that forms right at that old key daily high. This is what I'm referring to for high probability setups. It's not that we're looking for down close candles to buy at and up close candles to sell at. There has to be a confluence of things that would be married, okay, or connected to a narrative that would be seen and understood by way of the daily chart. The low here on this candle and the high here defines the fair value gap or BISI, buy side and balance, sell side and efficiency. Midpoint is exactly right there during London Open. So we have time and price meeting with the narrative expecting higher prices, draw on liquidity at weekly, SIBI, sell side and balance, buy side and efficiency. We traded up into it here. Then we moved into consolidation. And one more time, we poked our head above previous day's high, and also tagging that consequent encroachment of the weekly SIBI. That's what this level is up here, okay? Trading all the way down to a random level here. No, absolutely not. Consequent encroachment of this BISI that's seen on the 15-minute time frame, refined from a 60-minute BISI. Euro dollar. This is our daily chart. Here's our rejection block we talked about previous week and heavy distribution or institutional distribution for the euro dollar at these levels. This was a stop run here as we mentioned last week. Go look at the review. Contrast that with what we see now. All of this was 
foretold in the previous week's market reviews. We have a SIBI here. Okay, and all this markup will be self-explanatory when we drop down lower time frames. This week we had a draw on liquidity below here for the sell side liquidity resting below equal lows. Expectation was we would see the range expansion on the downside and sweeping and purging the liquidity resting below this old low. Moving into an hourly chart for the euro dollar. Here's that fair value gap and using the bottom of that fair value gap as resistance, real resistance. Moving on into Tuesday, we had a nice sell off, came back up, small little retracement, another level of distribution. And this is the part I want to talk about tonight for the euro. Again, this is very important, so you want to be making sure that you have this recorded as it re as it relates to SIBI and BISI analysis. This is the March 7th, 2019 low. Okay, and let me go back and show you what that is. That's this low right here. Okay, this low is this line, this being extended out. We have a SIBI here. Sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. One single candle passes down between the range of this low of this candle and this candle's high. So all of this is grossly imbalanced on the sell side only. Buy side has not been efficiently offered to the market. The way that has to be done now, because the markets are electronically traded, they're not open outcry anymore. So to facilitate that, the algorithm, or IPTA, Interbank Price Delivery Algorithm, will want to rebalance that. It'll want to get up into that level and rebalance that. Now, for someone that's gone through the mentorship, is familiar with SIBI, BISI, fair value gaps, and all that business, they're going to define that range from this low to this high. Any other time, that would be normal, and that's expected. But we have to throw in a curveball now because we have this old low now. So that's a major break in structure relative to what time frame? The daily. So if we break an old daily low or break an old daily high, that has to be refined to create the new imbalance. And I'll show you what that means when we go into a 15 minute time frame for right now. Notice that on Euro, we have a lower low being formed as you would expect with a higher high forming on the dollar index. So everything is symmetrical so far. Consequent encroachment is the midpoint of the SIBI from this low to this high. No problem, it's in agreement. Let's move down into a 15 minute time frame. And now we have the range defined just from the previous old daily low on March 7th, 2019, and this single pass on the downside and then this candle's high because we, the candle opens trades up a little bit creates a slightly higher high than the open and then trades down so buy side was offered on this single candle up to that high up to the old march 7th 2019 low that's the true sibi or sell side imbalance okay the buy side imbalance has to be refined in a efficient manner up to march 7th 2019's low so if we know that, we have a range that creates this new SIBI. The old low on March 7th and this candle's high. If we know that this is the range that's imbalanced, then we have to split that in half and get the consequent encroachment of that range. And that's exactly what you get here. So multiple confluences of supporting evidence that this is going to be a level that it would want to trade back up to to rebalance. Does it need to come all the way back up to here? No, it doesn't have to do that. Does it need to come all the way back up here? No, it doesn't have to do that. But what's reasonable okay or consequential to the idea or theory of rebalancing that's the encroachment we expect okay so lower low on friday relative to thursday price rallies up if this low is met with the cable making a lower low then everything's hunky-dory but let's take a look at cable now here's cable on the daily chart we mentioned the SIBI back here, did all the, the markup I'm worrying about that. This is the draw on liquidity we were looking for, the bullish order block right here, and the volume imbalance right here. Again, go back and watch the previous recordings because that's where you were aiming for. We were looking at all this price action, waiting for a real setup. When the setup formed, then it was easy. 
right now, I want to know if we're going to be trading higher from this price point here. Because I think the Q on dollar index is going to be based on what we're going to see in cable. And I think that's the, the, the real driver right now for near term. So the central banks are really balancing the books across all of the major currencies with this one single currency in mind. So it's holding up a lot of, well, clean price action. If the Brexit was removed, and which is obviously pointless to even talk about because it's there, we got to deal with it. Well, I don't personally have to deal with it, but as a trader, I have to deal with it. So if we are looking at catalysts that cause uncertainty in the marketplace where it makes it more difficult, okay, we're at that right now. So remember, there's periods that you've, experienced with me where everything becomes easy it's one-sided and i say okay this is where it's going now we're at a moment where i don't know for sure i have to wait for more information and you've seen that before once i get that information then it becomes clear then i can give you a little bit stronger prognostication about where price may go on the near term i'm studying this to see if we get some measure of um, support on this order block here Below that, there really isn't anything that strikes me as interesting because I don't see this as something to be meaningful. Um, I don't care about this one, Th this right here or the rejection block, which is the lowest close of that candle uh, because we essentially filled in any runoff on this candle. Not that it's a fair value gap, not that it's a busy because it's all inside of the single down close candle. I just think that if we break below this low, we're going way down here. Okay, so do we do it from where we are right now without running any higher? That's what I have to wait to see because I don't know. And right now I don't trust it. We've arrived at the level we are looking at. So this was terminus. Okay, our downside objective for our move from up here, down here. We've, re we've met it. It's been achieved. So now we move to the sidelines and we sit on our hands and wait for more information. For a new trader, for a new student here, that's going to be like, what? You should already know. No, right now, I don't know. Okay, there are times when I'm highly confident, very, very assured of one direction over another. Right now, for cable, I don't know. Moving into an hourly chart. Okay, we have our daily SIBI here, which has been refined. Then we have another SIBI in here, which we talked about um, in Wednesday's. Uh, teaching so if you haven't watched that one go back because i talk about how you refine that level and overcome the not getting filled uh, scenario it doesn't mean it's always going to you know fill you doesn't mean you're always going to be right but it's my approach to calibrating my entry level and calibrating the levels because there's going to be some discrepancies across all of the free you know the feeds and the the frequently asked question is is why does my chart look like this and your chart looks like that it's because you're using something outside of what we're using for the mentorship and right now this is ava trade demo okay so if you're trying to relate it to your broker's live feed of course it's going to be slightly different okay sometimes really different especially when there's a news event coming out like non for payroll or fomc you're going to see stark contrasts between the highs and the lows the opens and the closes of those candles and that's normal. It may not be a welcome event. It may not be something you're comfortable with accepting. But if you're going to trade, that's what it's like. Okay, you're going to have to deal with it. So right away, we have this up close candle. Now, is this a, a SIBI? It's not. Because it's all part of this down move here. Then we have the next candle here that creates a single up close candle, creates a high of the day, runs lower. All of this down movement is all part of this back and forth delivery of price. So it doesn't really create a imbalance until it gets below that candle's low. And that's not something I'd be considering. So the focus is not the refilling of this, but still it brings you back to the same thing. It's the order block. Okay, so when price is running up into this, what I'm indicating here is the bearish order block, not the refilling of this single candle. That's just an extra you know aberration it's not that it's what's necessary or what's needed here it's trading up to that because that's the last known 
area of distribution, which is the last up close candle prior to the down move. We have price moving down into a lower run on February 14th low, which is a bullish order block. And I'll show you again what that is. That's the order block here, February 14th. That's my wedding anniversary, matter of fact, and it's one of my son's birthday. Just throw that in there just in case you wanted. <laughs> the February 14th low, which is bullish order block. It's not a low, but it's a down close candle, which is an old low that we're looking at for a PD array matrix. And you'll learn about that in month five. We trade down below it and then rally away, creating a bullish order block. This down close candle right here is now retraded to here on an hourly basis. And that's significant because at the same time it trades that order block, that's when the dollar made a higher high and the euro dollar made a lower low. But it's not being seen here on cable. So that's going to be significant. So that is the catalyst for the run from this level up here to the bearish order block. So moving on into a 15 minute time frame, you can get more information here, that 60 minute bearish order block, extending it out in time, you see that. We have buy side liquidity pool, equal highs here, and sell side liquidity pool resting below here. Price trades below that old February 14th order block, trades into it, rallies away, creates equal lows, going into Friday, TGIF conditions, whatever the range has been for the week, if it's been down, usually late Thursday into Friday, there's some measure of retracement or correction. And you want to get the total range, which is in this case here, uh, Tuesday's high to Thursday's low, about 20 to 30% of that range, okay, from the low, that's how much it'll retrace back up generally. And same thing appro uh, approaching a daily candle for intraday, it's the same thing. Not always, there's certain profiles you have to work with them, but for now, just know that this fulfilled the TGIF scenario, and that's a free lesson, and I don't know where it's at in the uh, recordings, and somebody that knows what that date is, uh, if you don't mind tweeting just the date, not what we're talking about here, I don't want to draw any special attention to it, but uh, if you want to help me out and you know which one that was when I was teaching the TGIF uh, setup, just tweet me that date. And I'll know what that is, okay? Just no details around it, just the date. And that'll help everyone else that's following. Because if you see that tweet, I'll respond with thank you. And then you'll know that's the date that you can go find it on the archives for the weekly commentary. Or wherever it's at. I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain I did it as a weekly commentary teaching lesson. But it is what it is. I just don't know what it is right now off the top of my head. But anyway, the sell side liquidity pool is swept so that liquidity is purged and on the upside we run buy side liquidity all the way up to a premium array which in this case is the 60 minute bearish order block beautiful 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 precision can't my, can't get better than that so um, i'm neutral on cable where we're at right now uh with the heavy news that's coming out next week it could do whatever it wants to do and i'm fine with sitting on the sidelines Euro dollar, same thing. Um, dollar, I want to see it trade higher and stay above that key daily high you know, on, on a closing basis. So I'm neutral going into next week with a a very, very modest bullish stance on dollar. Very modest. Uh, we need to get through this week's news and then we'll probably you know, continue into whatever is expected to see for the dollar index. I'd like to see that weekly inefficiency fulfilled. Uh, but, you know, right now we have a lot of heavy, heavy news next week. And again, it's not farm payroll. It's a brand new month. And it's also the peak of seasonal tendencies. So, you know, it, everything could get really, really interesting this month. But let it work out its first week of pitfalls and snares. But last bit of business is dollar versus CAD. This is that weekly SIBI, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. Again, look at the previous recordings and you'll see that it's being indicated here. Consequent encroachment, I talked about that here. That That's all we needed to see for this week. And we've seen Thursday and Friday trade softer as a result. Uh, I want to see it maintain similar fashion with 
the dollar index, I want to see it stay above this candle's close. Okay, so I don't have that level right off the top of my head, and I should have had it in here. I apologize. But check your charts and just know that this level here on, on the close, the last up close candle right here, that closing price, I want to see dollar cat stay above that. Okay, so it can trade all the way down to that and still be okay. We also have a very small little gap in here from the previous day's high to where we are right now, uh, Friday's low. So there's a little bit of a range it can still drop down into. I'd rather see it not do that. That's what I'd like to see because that could be a breakaway gap or it could be a measuring gap, which would indicate more than just these equal highs being taken out. A longer term basis, as long as we see a bullish dollar or if we see an exceedingly bearish Canadian dollar, uh, this is my target for dollar cat. Okay. Moving on to an hourly chart. This is our buy side liquidity pool here. And then we have a volume imbalance. There's no candle bodies in here. Okay, so you got to look at the down close candle where sell side delivery was offered. And then there's one single candle here. So there's no bodies in here. So that's a, a volume imbalance. You're going to wait to see or look to see candles come down into that and fill that. And you can see that do it perfectly here. This is what you would expect to see. We have a 60 minute bullish order block here. And we have a 60 minute bullish order block here, which started the whole upside movement on dollar CAD. Now we were bullish dollar CAD, especially folks that were in uh, the charter members. Okay, so we were bullish on dollar CAD. We saw some upside movement there. And moving on into a 15 minute time frame, you can really appreciate the volume and balance here on the 15 minute time frame. Look how the bodies come down and fill it perfectly. That is how you know the algorithms are in control. There is no buying and selling um, discrepancies. There's a lack of buyers, so therefore it, it, you know there's a sell-off or there's a lack of uh, sellers, so therefore it's going to go higher. That's nonsense, okay? That is absolute nonsense. <laughs> if you believe that, seriously, if you believe that, there's a couple bridges in New York I'd love to sell you. But again, you don't appreciate this until you see it over and over and over again. And it escapes all of the theories that is permeating this industry where it's just complete and utter nonsense. If it were those factors that cause this price to go higher and lower, to stall and stay around a specific level or retrace back to a specific level, I mean, think about what that implies. If the statistics are that 90% of losing traders have been consistently been wrong, okay? But yet we are sold on the idea that the markets move on buying and selling pressures, okay? But they're turning on all these specific high frequency, accurate portions of, of price action. So if these things are, are always happening based on buying and selling pressures, and 90% club, nobody's really making money, and it's sold to us that no one can time the market. So it just when you really take a step back and you really digest what's going on, you're being lied to. Okay, it's manipulation in the highest form. And then when you take a stance like I teach it to you, it's not confusing anymore. It's not random. You know exactly what should happen, and therefore. If everybody was losing money, then why do the markets work like I'm teaching it? Think about it. If the markets were absolutely as random as they are sold to us, and price is rallying based on buying and it stops going up when there's a lack of buyers, that's, that is stupid. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But yet, just like you did, I started the same way in the 90s thinking, okay, well, that's got to be what's true because that's what all the books say and it's against the law for them to write a book and say something that's illegal <laughs> that, was my, that was the myopic view i had but nonetheless i'm di I digress so we have a 60 minute order block here that's being uh, denoted price moves in a consolidation which is also the equilibrium price point of the range of this high and this low so we trade back down the equilibrium sweep it a little bit equal lows sell side liquidity it's been taken and then right before that run up here on the Canadian dollar 
I think it was a rate announcement. Um, and if I said that wrong, I apologize, but I'm almost certain that's what it was. Uh, the rally here, we looked for to trade up and to that weekly SIBI. Consequent encroachments has been uh, shown here. And we trade right back up to it again on Thursday perfectly. And then we leave a liquidity pool here. So this right here is my next week's objective. I want to see as long as we stay above that key level I mentioned earlier, this in dollars bullish or at least held in consolidation, not lower. Uh, this is my next week's opportunity for a run on liquidity. So if I can get something for a low resistance liquidity run, and that's taught in month one, uh, this will be my target for next week, hopefully Monday and Tuesday. If it doesn't happen on Monday and Tuesday, then something will happen because of the news, I'm sure, that will take us up there. Um, I just don't know. Okay, so I'm, I'm waiting and I'm exercising patience because we had a really good week this week and last week. And now we're at a period where we have to wait for more information. It's not real clear. I'm bullish dollar CAD. I'm bullish dollar. But look at the economic calendar. There's a lot of reason to be cautious next week. Okay, there's no reason to be going in there gunslinging next week. Don't try to push your uh, limits. Don't expect a lot from me because, to be honest with you, I'm dialing back um, all of the uh, the showing off I've done on Twitter. Um, I'm really not going to be doing any of that anymore anyway. So there won't be any, I did this trade, I did that trade. It's gotten stupid now. So you know, it's not teaching anybody, and it's very distracting because I wanted the long record of it, and I have it now. So anybody that's outside of the the mentorship even those individuals that are in the mentorship you want to see what i do with a single account you've been watching me do that okay so it's not important what i do what's important is you're here to learn how to read price action okay and then slowly work towards having your own unique model it's not about me it's never been about me but i wanted to go back on twitter to kind of like settle the score with a lot of folks that and even the folks that left in the first mentorship group that assumed therefore you know, because I've never really showed a track record, I can't trade, and it's all been, you know, willy-nilly and making it up as I go. If that's what you feel, then obviously I'm not going to be able to convince you otherwise at this point. So either you have enough evidence to, to stick with the process, or you know, it's bon voyage. See you later. So that's going to be it for this week. Um, I will give you a synopsis of what we'd expect to learn in the month of May's lessons and what to expect in regards to that. Again, that's going to be this Wednesday's review video. So that'll be past the uh, the first of the month. So that'll give you your, your schedule for what lessons are, are coming. And tomorrow, for those individuals that are in the 2017 charter group, uh, model number 11 will be released. And I'll be releasing that. I don't know off the top of my head what time I gave you guys yesterday but I think it was or I tweeted it today but I will be releasing at 5 p.m. Uh, I have a lot more admin work than I thought I was going to have to uh, do and I'll be working late rolling continuation for folks uh, that have paid, made their early payment and I'll be doing that again tomorrow so um, there's a lot of volume with that and I appreciate your patience but it's going to be 5 p.m. tomorrow uh, price action model number 11 that still gives you all the saturday night and all the uh, all day sunday to study it and play around with it and that's going to be it folks have yourself a very very pleasant weekend be safe and i'll talk to you all again on monday